Hello and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place where we share creative and inspiring learning in our schools. Season 2, Episode 17. Hello and welcome back to the Education on Fire podcast with me, Mark Taylor. Um, I'm at the BET show here at the Excel um, Centre in London and I'm delighted to be joined by Lucy Hindmarsh, who's from Mama Codes. Um, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about what you do and what the company is um, and, and how coding is, is incredibly important? Um, for such young people, which is kind of the niche that you seem to have really managed to, to, to get involved in. Yeah, Mama Codes is all about getting kids aged between three and seven coding. Um, we're really keen to get them coding in a really fun and creative way that shows them all the possibilities um, for, for using code. It can often be seen um, coding, the world of coding is a very closed off world, quite geeky, quite male focused and we want to make sure that every child understands that they have the ability to code and create and make things. So what we've developed over the um, last 18 months, we're, we're in startup phase, is two curriculum offerings, one for the early years curriculum and one for key stage one. And Within that, we focus on using song and rhyme, nursery rhymes, to get kids started because um, all children ha are used to having songs and rhymes sung to them. And there's, there's a pattern and a flow to them in the same way as there's a pattern and a flow to code. So it, it kind of makes sense. And it's also a very engaging way for them to start their coding journey. We then move on once kids are a little bit more confident or for slightly older children to, children, to get them to code uh, poetry and jokes. And we're also creating a range of cross-curricular projects so that we um, can enable teachers to use our materials in a cross-curricular way. We're very keen for coding not to be isolated to one sort of ICT session a week. We, we would love to see schools using coding as part of geography lessons, history lessons, English lessons, everything, uh, so that kids are using it and are very literate with code. And why did you specifically go for the sort of the early years and key stage one? I mean, you hear quite a lot of coding um, around um, sort of key stage two and beyond. So, what, why specifically did you go for the younger, younger generation? I think it was as simple as our children were all they're all young children I think uh, Leanne's um, son Louis was three when we started this uh, my daughter and uh, our other co-founder Alice's daughter were four going on five and uh, Leanne has a, um, a daughter Lily who it was uh, was six at the time so we, we were very focused as parents on that age group and it kind of felt like well why not? Um, Alice has a background in coding and it was her that opened Leanne's and my eyes to all the possibilities. Um, we use Scratch Junior as our coding platform which it uses drag and drop blocks of code and they are iconic so you don't need to be able to read um, to be able to, to code with them which again it, it suits perfectly the early years and key stage one children who are maybe reading but not confident with their reading or having difficulties with their reading. So as, as a teacher, um, wh wh what's the starting point? Is it literally to go to um, Mama Code's website and, and see what it's all about? Are there free resources there so they get a flavour of, of what it's all about? Or we, we have on the Mama Code site a selection of examples of our projects and some of the finished animations. What we're very aware of is that, that coding has been on the curriculum since September 2014. However, teachers in general aren't coders and they haven't coded. So they've suddenly been tasked with this thing that a lot of them have never done before. So we've made a big effort to make sure that our 
Mama Code's projects are lesson ready and we include within each project a worksheet to hand out for the children, a lesson plan which details how the lesson should be structured, what the key points of learning will be and what the outcomes should be and also kind of most importantly we put together step-by-step -step tutorial videos that allow a teacher to either watch the video to learn how to code the project in advance of the class or to use it, the tutorial video as a learning tool, teaching tool within the classroom. It sounds like what, what you've managed to do, which is a, almost, is a really fantastic thing, is that ability to be able to just take the fear factor out of it for teachers. Because uh, like I say, if they haven't got any coding backgrounds or they suddenly come across something new they have to do, it's like, how do I fit that in, in terms of planning and organization and actually the skills that I need in order to do that. But uh, by having all those resources online, it sounds like you've covered all of those bases for everyone and it's as supportive as you possibly can be. That, that was our aim. We, we want, it, it's, you hit the nail on the head, we want to take the fear factor out of it. For, for children um, to know that any child can code and for teachers, I mean, they're up against it with, with time. Um, and we know we have friends, very good friends who are teachers and we know very well the teachers are our children's schools and we know the pressures that are on them. So we want to make this a fun experience for them as well because ultimately if you, you get into teaching you want to engage and you want to help children to progress in, in their lives so to offer something like Mama Codes where it's a really fun way of teaching those children can only be a positive. And I, I, I really love the way that um, you have the flow in, a, in an organic sense in terms of kids love learning nursery rhymes, they love song, they love, they love that sort of patter stuff which they just grow up with and it just becomes part and parcel of what they know and what they want to do. Um, so how do they then progress through that? So uh, if they're really early years, um, you showed me a great example of a gingerbread man before and some of the backgrounds they can do in getting them to move and all that. How does that then progress through into key stage one? What we do with, with children in the early years, it's focused on the songs and on the nursery rhymes. And then as they progress into key stage one, we focus more on jokes and on poetry. We've, um, we've got a three witches um, coding project from Shakespeare, Double Double, Toyin and Trouble. Um, and we're also developing our cross-curricular materials as well. So as, as I was saying before, that um, coding can be integrated across the curriculum, which as well as meaning that they get to do some coding in geography or history or whatever, it's also developing their coding skills. Okay. And is it specifically UK based or if um, I've got some listeners in the US and Australia and various places, can, can it, it can be used anywhere and sort of fits within their curriculum too? We've developed based on the UK curriculum because that's where we are. But we've had a lot of interest from the US and from Australia. Uh, we have um, we have uh, some schools already in the States using Mama Codes very successfully. So uh, we've also had a lot of interest from, um, from overseas, Scandinavian countries. And we recently struck our first licensing deal, which is in Hong Kong. And the added bonus that um, the, the company that we're working with in Hong Kong found with Mama Codes is that they, they see it as the children being a, able to learn English as well as coding. Oh, fantastic. And that's a real byproduct that you weren't expecting is, um, when, no. when you were designing the whole yeah, thing. We, we had, we, we, yeah, it hadn't even entered our sort of um, consciousness, but yeah, it oh. seems to go down well as an option. Oh, sounds fantastic. And um, in terms of the, the cost to the schools and how they would make it work, how, how would they go about um, finding more out about that sort of thing? All the information is on our website, which is literally mama.codes is the URL. And uh, we run uh, subscription plans where a school can either buy an early year subscription for the year or a key stage one subscription for the year, or they can buy a bundle of a combination of the two. Okay. And, um, and what sort of figure is that? Is it... We'll... Um, we're priced at £480 for the, the primary bundle of EYFS and Key Stage 1 and the individual packages for early years and for Key Stage 1 um, come at £264 each for, for the year. Great, so it's incredibly affordable and, and very user-friendly as I've, as I've been witnessing myself. The, the affordability factor was another thing that we were very focused on getting right because we understand again the pressures on, on schools, particularly state schools with, with budgets. And 
and we we're just passionate about getting as many children happily cozying as possible and um and you've got some good testimonials I see from some of your publicity here here at the show as well and so what's the feedback been like from some of the staff that have been using it it, it's fabulous. The um, the feedback is so positive, and I think it's a it's a massive relief for the teachers that they've got that are using it already. That they've got something that really engages the children, and they can see, really see the children progressing through using our projects. And another thing that we we hadn't particularly set out to do is the amazing feedback we get um, from teachers who have children with special educational needs within their classes, and the um, the confidence it gives those children who. Are perhaps struggling in other areas of the curriculum because they can code with mama codes is immense and um i guess they can also do it um you talked about special education needs but also no matter what your ability in terms of coding and also about your level of understanding you can progress at your own rate i guess because each individual project is, is specific to that child so you're not having to do a particular level for a whole class in order to to, to complete a task they, they can go on their own for the moment we do operate um, a method which is one project for for a class um, however there are the possibilities um, we tend to have the children divided into pairs and so there would be the possibility that if they're the, ta the children were divided up into groups that you could have uh, groups that were advancing at a faster pace yeah um, one, of the, one of the examples I saw was um, doing some different backgrounds and, and different movements and that kind of thing. So if one, if one pair particularly wanted it to be a certain colour or a certain action, they, they've got the ability to be able to do that in their own, their own way rather than it being the same as the other groups within it. One, one of the things that we encourage is that if children are really picking it up very quickly with a project, that they, once they've completed their project, they can then go on to adapt and, and create more within that project. And that's the beauty beauty of it and you you will always have especially in um, in a state primary of um, class of 30 children there's going to be a wide range of abilities and it's lovely that the projects can work for every one of those levels it, it sounds really fantastic and um I, I really love the fact that it, it's at that young age um which is which is something quite i've not really come across in, in my time in, in terms of understanding coding and how that's uh, how that's done and um and just that process of seeing the building blocks and actually being able to see um essentially what is the beginning of an algorithm and, and understanding how all those things fit together in order to make the whole which is so key in 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 the whole idea of computing and, and bringing that that into your curriculum yeah, that, that's, um, I think, the, the, the looks of joy on the children's faces when they're creating their, their projects is, is brilliant. And it's, um, Scratch Junior itself is very bright and very appealing to the eye. Um, so there's, there's a lot of fun to be had using it. Um, and when they've got a final project, um, are you able to save that or share it in any way? Or, or how, how does that side of it work? At the moment, when, with, um, with Scratch Junior, when a project is completed, uh, the, the child can save it to that particular tablet. Um, and we can also show schools a way to then um, download those projects so that they could be displayed on, on, a, on their school website to show parents. And that's, and that's becoming more and more prevalent now, isn't it? That sort of website has been able to show work because it's the digital thing is the common denominator that you, you, you can show it very easy form whether they then incorporate it into part of their blog or part of their sort of interaction with schools in different ways and I, and I, and I really like that as a, as a possibility it's not always a question of coming in and seeing the notice board anymore seeing the dis art displayed when they've done it not virtually or, <laughs> or, yeah. or by hand but actually being able to just show it in the click of a button today I've managed to do this and uh, I think that's a great new way of yeah, sharing. Yeah, I think as a parent, it's lovely to get a real idea of what your child is doing and, and achieving and not having to wait for sort of parents' evenings or, or whatever. Yeah. Well, it's a brilliant project and I've really enjoyed looking through it and seeing how it's all working and everything. And I wish you every success with it. And, um, Thank and, you. And, and once again, we'll have links and all the details on the educationonfire.com website um, with links to the website um, and, and any social media feeds that, um, that you can follow. Um, and thanks very much for joining me. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for listening to the Education on Fire podcast. For more information, please go to educationonfire.com.